Hi high five, so we're back to doing fluency on this video today. We are looking at doubles and near doubles. So for example, if you had six plus seven, I'd be expecting you to do double six in your head and then add one to making that adjustment. So you've got 30 seconds on the video coming up with a timer before the answers come up, or as always, you can pause and try and get through them all. Good luck. yesterday's challenge now so you had to decipher the symbols and create a number sentence to find out what the answer was so for the first one you had one whole there was four lots of tenths three hundredths and one thousandth so you could have used a place value grid for this and your decimal should have been 1.431 as a mixed number that is one whole and 431 hundredths the second one you had two holes three lots of tenths, two hundredths and two thousandths. So your decimal was 2.322, or as a mixed number, that's two holes, 322 hundredths. Well done if you got that. So today we're gonna to carry on thinking about our decimals, but thinking about where they are on our number line and what they're made up of. So as you can see, we've got our trusty place value grid in again. And we need to be remembering that as this number line goes further down, the value gets much, much smaller. So if we're thinking about two decimal places, so hundredths, thinking about a penny, okay? So compare that penny to a pound. It's a hundred times smaller, my penny, than a pound. So when you're thinking about your decimals, you always need to be thinking about your whole numbers, your pounds, your hundreds of pounds, are much, much more valuable than your pennies, and even smaller than pennies, thousands. Okay, so try and remember that today. Your place value group should help you. So today we're thinking about number lines. We're going to be using them a lot. And a number line is something that goes on and on and on. It can go both ways. So each time my number line is going to change. This time I've got naught at one end, and one hole at the other end. I've got 10 lines in between, 10 increments. So I need to figure out, if I wanted to know what this was here, so what, let's call it A, then I need to know what each line is worth. Now I know I've got 10 lines between naught and one. So if I think about splitting one down into 10 times, I know that each of these, each jump is worth one tenth or 0.1. So I can count along. I know that halfway between 0 and 1, or 10 tenths, so here we've got 10 tenths, is 0 0.5 or 5 tenths. So I can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here must be 5 tenths or 0 0.5. So I can carry on counting. If each one is worth a tenth, 6 tenths, 7 tenths, and we know as a decimal that is 0.7. So using that same number line, I now want you to pause the video and I want you to figure out what is the value of B. So we know what each increment is worth, it is here. So pause the video, work out what is B. Hopefully you remember that each one of these is 0.1 or 1 tenth. So we start at zero, there's 0.1, so V must be 0.2 or two tenths. Okay, a new number line. So I've got naught at this side of my number line, and over here I've got naught point one. So we know that naught point one is the same as one tenth. Now, same as my last number line, I've got ten increments in between naught and naught point one, but I need to figure out what is the value of C. So see if you can pause the video and do what I did at the last step. We need to figure out what one jump is worth. As we know that our final end of our number line is one tenth, we know that each jump must be smaller than one tenth. Because we've got ten of them, each one must be ten times smaller. So hopefully you've figured out that one jump is the same as one hundredth 
or as a decimal, 0.01. We can then fill in the rest of our number line, so 0.01, 0.02, etc, etc, etc. Over here then, we could go backwards if we wanted to, so we've got one tenth or a hundred hundredths, nine hundredths, eight hundredths. So eight hundredths is the point of C, or as a decimal, 0 0.08. Okay, because remember, one tenth is the same as ten hundredths. Okay, next one. So we've got another number line starting from naught. But this time at the end of my number line, I've got 0.01 or 100, it's the same. I've got 10 increments on my number line and I want to know what is the value of D. See if you can write it as a fraction and as a decimal. Pause the video and then we'll go through it. Hopefully we've realised that because we've gone from 0 to 100, each step must be 10 times smaller than hundredths. So let's think, if hundredths is here, ten times smaller than that is thousandths. So here we've got one hundredth is the same as ten thousandths. And I've got ten jumps here. So each jump must be worth one one thousandth, or as a decimal, zero point zero zero one. So then to get to D, we just need to count up. So 0 0.001, 0 0.002, 0 0.003, D, we've got 0 0.004, or as a fraction, 4 thousandths. Making this next number line a little bit harder, because I'm not starting at 0. I've started my number line at 1.5 and it ends at 2.5. I've got the same 10 jumps in between, and I want you to figure out what is the value of E. Can you write it as a fraction and a decimal? So the first thing we need to find out is how much value is between 1.5 and 2.5. We can see that there's one hole in between one and two, because the fifth hasn't changed. So if I've got one hole all the way across here, and there's 10 jumps still. So we've actually already done this, we've just moved further up the number line. So each jump is worth one tenth. So I'm on E, but it isn't two tenths, because I'm already at one hole. So it should be one hole point, well this is five tenths, so the first jump would be 1.6, my second jump should be 1.7. So that's one whole and seven tenths. Well done if you got that. If you didn't, have a go at finding this point here. We'll call it F. So the same number line, we started at 1.7, we're counting in tenths. So we would have 1.8, 1.9, 1.9, is the same as one whole and nine tenths. So if I add one more tenth, I'm going to have one whole and ten tenths. That's the same as adding one new whole. So actually my next jump is two holes. This is the same as two holes or one whole and ten tenths. So then I add one more tenth, 2.1, and then at F we get to 2.2. As a fraction, that's two holes and two tenths. So well done if you got that. Okay, the next one for you to have a go at is further up the number line again. So I'm starting at 20.2, so 20 holes and two tenths, and at the end of my number line is 20.3, so 20 holes and three tenths. So I want you to figure out, pause the video, what is G? Can you write it as a decimal and as a fraction? So first things first, we know that this is 20 holes and 2 tenths, and up here at the other end of my number line is 20 holes and 3 tenths. So my whole number line, I've only moved 1 tenth. There's 10 in between, so I need to figure out what is each jump worth. 
It's got to be smaller than tenths. It's ten times smaller, so it must be hundredths. So let's think about what is one hundredth after 20.2. Well, in my number, I don't have any hundredths, so if I put it up here, 20.2, at the moment I've got two tenths, if I just add one hundredth, it just goes in the hundredths column. So one jump along would be 20.21, or 20 holes and 21 hundredths. Okay, so if we carry on jumping in hundredths, so we've got 20.21, 20.22, we're adding hundredths, remember? And then the next one, 20.23. So G is 20.23. We've added three lots of hundredths. Okay? As a mixed number, that is 20 holes and 23 hundredths. Okay? If you're struggling with that, we'll just do one more on this number line. So I want you to figure out what is this point here. Off you go. So remember we're counting in hundredths. So at the moment I've got two tenths and three hundredths. Two, Twenty holes, two tenths, four hundredths. Five hundredths, six hundredths. This would be seven hundredths. So I'm still at twenty holes. I've still got two tenths. But instead of three hundredths, I've now got seven hundredths. So your decimal should be 20.27. Okay, for the last one, I've got a bit of a challenge for you. So on my number line, I've started in the middle. The only two numbers I've got is 3.3, .3, and then one, two, three, four, five jumps later, I've got 3.4. So think about what's the difference between the 3.3 .3 and the 3.4. But rather than 10 jumps in between them, I've only got five. So your task is to find out what goes here. I couldn't remember what letter we were on, so it's a question mark. Good luck, then we'll go through it. Okay, so 3.3 .3 and 3.4. The difference is one tenth. So in between here and here is one tenth. But one tenth, rather than it being in ten jumps, is only in five jumps. Five jumps. So we need to figure out how many is one jump worth. So there's five lots of what gives me ten tenths. That's what we're looking for. Uh, sorry, one tenth, not ten tenths. So our answer that hopefully you should have got is two hundredths or 0 0.02. Remember it's got to be smaller than tenths in each jump because one tenth is our whole jump of five and we know that that one tenth is the same as ten hundredths. But my hundredths are split over five so each jump is two hundredths so then we can count in hundredths. So my first one would be 3.32, 3.34, 3 3.36, and our question mark, 3.38. So that gives us three holes and 38 hundredths. Really well done if you got that. That's it from today's lesson, and that's exactly the activity that you've got to complete today. You'll find it on Purple Mash. My biggest tip would be look at the number line really carefully, and I would even draw it out yourself on a piece of paper so that you can figure out what each step is worth first. There's also a challenge coming up, and I would love to see your answers. So keep up the hard work, and I'll see you tomorrow.